Hello and welcome to episode 97 of Omocast. I'm Chris here with Titus. Uh, Andrew is not with us tonight. He is working, I think, or he's not feeling good. One of the two. We don't know. Doing something. So uh, make sure to go to all social media places, facebook.com slash FOMOcast, Twitter, FOMO underscore cast, FOMO podcast on Instagram, and um, go to our YouTube page, youtube.com, and search FOMOcast, or it might be under FOMOcast podcast, a little weird on that one, I can't never remember, um, but if you search FOMOcast, it will show up. And then um, make sure to go to Twitch and go on there. We're actually recording this live so they can see us on camera. And then uh, Titus can actually wave to that camera. It's a little worse camera, but I'm going to work on upgrading that one too. Um, You're going to buy another camera? Maybe. Well, I have another camera that's similar to that. It's a little bit better. Um, And uh, Titus, we got complaints. I don't know how to do audio. And so I actually think what happened, honestly... It's a, it, they have a running joke. I don't want to hear their voices, but it's not true. Um, I don't know how to use this board, really. Even when they match up, they don't match up. So um, I have my mic, uh, my ear pieces, is everything adjusted. Titus sounds a lot louder. He is registering like he wants to, I think, on the board. Finally. Finally. Um, but uh, hopefully the audio sounds better than this for all of Titus's friends who think I'm a horrible person and don't <laughs> want to hear about Titus. I have a Titus-centric part of the show today because he has seen more of this uh of what we're gonna talk about watchmen because titus has seen a lot of it um uh we also had someone who talked about on the comments on youtube um they wanted to see more about uh i, I want to call it like a a dark show but you um season it's pretty dark, two is right? coming out. like a killer um S- so spoiler alert yeah he's a killer in the first one but it's the been out se- for a while. the second season has like a different aspect, like in the, the trailer. So this doesn't spoil anything. Um, well, before we get that, make sure you go to PodBros.com, the PodBros Network. I've been listening to Kapowcast. A couple other ones are going over. Um, they're doing unboxing on uh, different uh, action figures and whatnot. They get these limited edition ones. It's pretty cool. So make sure you go there and Concon's Cantina for all your Mandalorian stuff. I'm gonna save episode uh, six, five, six, and seven. For um, Andrew, when he gets here, because he's more into it. Um, but I will talk to you later on about why you're not enjoying it. Um, you know why? Well, well, hold on. We'll get into that. Right. But so someone commented about you, mm-hmm. the show, and how it was like a guilty pleasure. It was almost like that that um, Ted Bundy one with Zac Efron, how he was so handsome. and But that was the real appeal of, of Ted Bundy in real life. So they wanted to go as realistic as possible. Well, with you, everyone, the backlash was we love him, we love him, we love him. And the guy who plays the main character was like, no, 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 no. This guy is a piece of garbage. Um, What's trippy is, what would you expect on, like, a second season of a show that's dark like that? What would you expect? Um, I haven't seen the show. Probably maybe they go back to flashbacks is kind of a thing with a lot of trend with these shows. It's like go back to maybe before he became... So the killer. So like you're all, you're close, but the what the pre the so the the trailer alone. I also I've seen it doesn't no. come out to the end of this month, I believe. Is basically him moving to L.A. He meets a girl. He's doing and like this one guy's like, "What's your intentions with my sister?" That's all you see of it. it shows him getting close, and um, it goes the flashbacks of the girl he was with in the last season. So you're kind of like, oh, wait, did he do, is he, is it, is it repeating? You don't know. But then you see on the end of, sorry, spoiler alert again for you, season one, if you haven't watched it, you know, you need to get on it. You'll skip the next 15 seconds. Um, but he, ha- a girl meets him in the back of his bookstore, because that's what he has, the bookstore in New York. And she's like, we need to talk. Well, this girl's featured prominently in the trailer, like them going after each other. So it almost feels like she... Is not, I don't know if she's jealous or if he tried to kill her or what happened, but it's almost like she's trying to get revenge on him. So they're flipping the script, it feels like. But it also shows that it's almost like they're they're saying it's okay with what she's doing because, yeah, he did this last season. So they flash back in the trailer to what he did last season. So this is like linear with the – so it goes to the It's fir- the next – it's right okay. after the last season. Yep. So now girls going after him with the same kind of thing? Uh, no, it's, it's the girl that he talked to in the bookstore who, I don't know if she's like an ex-girlfriend or if she was, he tried to do the same thing to her or maybe they just dated, it was innocent and then he dumped her, whatever. We don't know. But 
Um, before we came on, we were talking about, because the person on YouTube was like, have you guys heard of any or watched any kind of dark show? And the one that I thought of immediately, I, I haven't even watched the first full season. I've only watched like 10 episodes, I think, or 12, um, is The Righteous Gemstones. Because it feels like, when you're watching it, you're like, oh, that's it's so funny. It's like, it's like a dark humor. Right. But then you're like, this is some like real stuff. Like, this could re- really happen on numerous <laughs> levels. I don't know exactly, but yeah, I mean, extortion, probably, for Ex- sure. Extortion, the um, videotapes, videotapes yeah. of certain things that are happening. Right. Um, I mean, that's happened in real life. And, and then you have the the competing preachers right. who, I mean, that, that feels very realistic because everyone blasts them. So that one feels really, 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 really realistic. But I can't think of any other show where you're like, well, Lucifer. I mean, the TV show Lucifer, you're rooting for the devil. So, I mean, you're, you're kind of going for the bad guy. But he's turning good in that show. What? How can the devil be good? So, he takes a motto of basically like, that guy's robbing the store so I can punish him. Oh. But if this person's doing good, even though maybe they've had a bad life or whatever, he's not doing the same thing. You know, he's not taking pleasure in punishing people. And... um in the very first season, so this is not really a spoiler, he gets shot because he tells the friend, shoot him. Well, he, they, the one of his little minions that works at his bar tells him, you're becoming too friendly with these people, so you're becoming, making yourself more vulnerable, vulnerable. So he becomes more human or whatever. So he gives himself kind of a, a likable aspect, but he's still the devil. You know what I mean? How long Do has you, that show been around? Uh, Three I think, seasons? Uh, seasons? Five, I believe. Uh, Netflix is giving him a sixth and final season, I believe. Fifth or sixth final season. And so... Uh, I was speaking of Netflix, I finished second season of Mindhunter. That's pretty okay. dark. I mean, that is that is true. And people do, like, you see some of the characters kind of fawning over these serial killers, like, kind of in awe, like, in shock. It, it shows it on the actual show? Of them, like, kind of... The women kind of... No, women, but it's, like, one of the guys who's an FBI agent was, like, hugging one of the serial killers okay. and stuff like that. So... They're kind of like in awe of these guys. Well, I mean, I I, I've, I started watching the first... I know that they're all based on real serial killers. Right. It's based on the real guys who created the created the, basically the position of, of a profiler. I mean, I wouldn't say how I mean, accurate it is, but there's certain things I think they came up with the word term serial killer. Right. And they came up with like behavioral science. Stuff they, like that. Well, yeah, they, they, they basically created everything. But um, and I have heard like... Uh, there's a guy from Turlock. I don't even know if you knew this. The guy from Turlock, he spoke, um, where do they speak in Iraq? Uh, probably Arabic. Arabic. So he's, he was a translator for Saddam Hussein when they had him in... in, in I heard about that, yeah. And that um, he was in a documentary and that he, like, became friends with him. With his as Saddam? Much, as much as you could become friends with someone like right. him. And it just proves to you that that's, maybe that's their quality. Because everyone forgets these people come into power or these people do their thing. There's a, there's a way they do it. And that's kind of the charm. Like Ted Bundy is one of the things, but I can't think of really a dark show that really isn't comedic. Cause I think that I think comedy kind of cuts it a little bit. So without tragedy, you can't have comedy. Well, no, I think like they had that show Reaper where that kid dies. It was like an old CW show and the okay. kid, the kid's dead and he, his job is to, kill people basically he's the reaper yeah and but it was comedic so it wasn't like it was super comedic it wasn't dark like righteous gemstones where they make comedy out of certain things but there's a very real tone to it um i mean i guess what was the one was it american gods i heard that one can be pretty pretty dark i haven't seen it people like it though it's also a book uh what about um american horror story watching that one oh you know what that makes sense that that could be another one that's like a dark show that people kind of not worship, but they're okay with the darkness. I mean, early seasons of The Walking Dead is pretty dark and gory. Yeah. I mean, it definitely set the bar for gore, I feel like, on TV. Yeah, and that's what, um, so you don't watch it, but The Mandalorian, um, the first episode, people really liked it because um, when he catches the guy that's attacking him, he pulls him through the door and the guy goes to turn and shoot him. Instead of shooting him, he shoots the door and cuts the guy in half. Right. So it's kind of like a, well, that was kind of excessive, but it was funny. Right. 
you know, because it's like, look, he could have done that. So I, I think um, gore is a little bit more acceptable. You see a lot more. Um, we like watching that show, 911. And uh, they show a lot of stuff in that. It's a sitcom? Uh, what is it? No, no, no. It's a it's a drama. Okay. It's about a 911 operator and uh, operators, I should say. On and Fox? Mm -hmm. On oh. Fox. And they have um, this fire department. And this is the cool part to me was a lot of these shows where they have tragedy type things. So it's an ambulance, whatever. Whenever someone gets hurt, who shows up? They're friends. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're a firefighter. You're off shift. You're having fun. You break your leg. Who shows up? Your friends. This one, legitimately, they'll go places and bad things will happen and it's just background people, nobodies. So I really appreciate that because it feels kind of like they're sticking true to like, this guy wouldn't be all over L.A. being a firefighter. He'd be in his one little area and that would be it. Right. So I like the realisticness of it, but they, they, gotten, they go really gory on that. There was a one where the guy got, a guy got cut in half riding a motorcycle. Yeah, and they showed a lot of it, and I was like, hmm. I go okay, like, and that's one thing. Like, I don't like um, when they um, like bone sticking out. And they'll have that every once in a while. Was this show rated TVM? No, uh, no, no, no. I don't. Th yeah, it's not TVM, not at all. They make it. I think there's a certain point you can do it. It can't be gushing blood, but if a bone's sticking out, there's no problem. And I think usually what they do is they show the skin like that, so there's no bone actually out, but you know what's going on. Okay. So, but. Um, we'll look up some more shows. I mean, there's a lot of shows that, I mean, I think now it's gone kind of away from that genre. Yeah. No more wizards or vampires as much. No. Those don't last very long anymore because they had all of them kind of ended. It's more about superheroes right now, right? Would you say as far as movies? There's always seems um, to be. Yeah. There seems to be consistently superhero movies more than gore. It's it's pretty violent, pretty you know? consistent. Um, we're going to talk about one surprising horror movie that I don't know where they went wrong with that, but um, let us know your favorite. Let's say it's a dark show that's not like uh, comedic at all. It's basically supposed to be dark. Uh, let us know on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and make sure to go to our YouTube, all you on YouTube comment. Um, so let's just go into that dark one. Um, I was optimistic. I thought it was the real Fantasy Island. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be like a little fun. Did you see there in Michael Pena? Yeah. He was in it like, oh, it's going to be a little fun. You get, see some comedic actors from, what is it, uh, Silicon Valley and some other things. Like, oh, it's going to be a fun movie. And then it just takes a dark it turn. It takes a dark turn on it. And so basically the premise is, um, for what I'm thinking, it's, it's, the, it's the lady who, because the, um, the girl that's like the one that welcomes him, she played Masande on Game of Thrones. Okay. <coughs> so you know her. Right, yeah. So it's her. And um, I think the girl she sat in the cabana is the one that wants all of this to happen. Because she's the only one you don't see with them. So what it is is they, the Fantasy Island, they're going to live out all their fantasies. And they're having fun. One guy wants to see action, so he wants to shoot his gun. This other, um, the girl played Arya on Pretty Little Liars. She wants to... Uh, pay back, get revenge on her old rival. And then uh, one lady wants to um, uh, take back the biggest mistake she made, and it shows her getting proposed to. And so eventually you see, what's the, f the first one you see is her walking in that room, right. and it said all these buttons to get your revenge, and the lights come on, and it's the girl that she wanted to get revenge on, and she's uh, gagged, and she's tied up, and she's like, no, this isn't what I wanted. And basically Michael Pena is like the island wants them together. So it's almost like the island dictates what happens. It has nothing to do with the people on the island. And so then one of them says, I think someone else, this is someone else's fantasy. So it's a weird take on the, on the show. I mean, we've seen it before with other stuff. Does but it ever I don't do think well? <sighs> Can you ever think of an example on the top of your head of reboot of something and take a different turn? I can't no. think of anything. <coughs> no, I mean, um, Chips, I mean, the Chips movie off the show went more, way more comedic. Was that Michael good? Pena. Was that good? I thought it was hilarious. Now, does that take place in modern times, or was that back in the 70s? That was modern. The premise oh. of this one was, um, Dax Shepard, um, is a former, uh, like a dirt bike rider. So he's a racer. And his wife leaves him, so he needs to get a real job, because he's just pouting in the back 
back like his back little he lives in the pool house okay so it's one of those things and it's it's pretty funny i think it's pretty funny a lot of people didn't like it because they like well it's not I'm like it's not mate there's no way you can relive it with eric estrada it's not it's not gonna happen yeah so um it does have some of the tropes that you see in that genre of of movie there's gonna be the same things that always kind of happen but they have a great comedic cast i think and it's across the board, so it's like well-known actors and actresses who have that comedic background, but also people who all you see them is dumb comedies, so it's got a good balance. Um, but yeah, Fantasy Island is going to be great. We also watched the uh, trailer for uh, Wonder Woman 84. That's probably going to do well. Uh, the soundtrack alone has me super excited. I don't know her backstory in the comics as well, but like I told Titus before we started recording... Um, Wonder Woman was one of my favorite movies just because, um, so spoiler alert, Titus hasn't seen it. Um, Tre- Trevor, he sacrifices himself for, or St- Steve Trevor sacrifices himself for Wonder Woman. And basically in the first movie there, it's the whole movie is basically about girl power, girl power, girl power. And she ends up, she does defeat the main bad guy, but it just showed, like, she wasn't doing it just, like, cause it, it, it just it, it just came together so well. The, the, the sequences, it reminded me of, like, the Pearl Harbor scenes when they're kind of running through stuff and fighting. It's a lot of that very good shot action. Um, the, the panning shots are really good. Um, the idea behind her fighting in the end is really, really, really good. And, um... You also the the reason why I like the Wonder Woman Wonder Woman concept is, you know before you even go in she's she's a part of this group of women who train from birth to be basically the baddest people on the planet. So you don't you're not, everything is out there. You don't you don't have any expectations that what she can't do. You think she can do everything. In this one, it feels a lot like she's. I don't know. I like that she wasn't like freaking out because in the trailer you see Steve Trevor's back. We don't know how. We're probably gonna find out. Um, but she doesn't do that thing where she's groveling like a woman would do in any kind of rom com. She's not. She's like, oh my god, this is so cool, kind of thing. So I want to know how he comes back. I, I haven't read the comics, so I don't know any possibilities. Do you know how to like? Can't you defeat Wonder Woman with like these certain like cuffs on her hands? Do you know that? Do you know you don't know much about it? No, I don't know much I about think. her. What about her cuffs? I don't know if she like someone puts if a man puts like these cuffs on her wrists, she becomes powerless. Um, there probably is some sort of cuff that you could put on her, something that would restrict her powers. But her powers don't come from anything. What it is is the um, her her shield's kind of like a uh, <coughs> her her wristbands are basically the same kind of material as you would see in Captain America's shield. She can deflect everything, and she uses those to her advantage. She has the lasso of truth, which she does use in the first one, which is hilarious. She throws it around Steve Trevor, and it that's the lasso of truth. Um, um, but I do like the fact that it does do some flashbacks of like her training when she was younger, because we do want to see that. That's you know, I want to see. Um, I just played the Last Jedi game. I'm um, the Last Jedi. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I played, uh, what's it called? Um, the new, new one? Fallen Order. Jedi mm-hmm. Fallen Order. And what I really, really, really enjoyed about it was whenever you were to learn a new, like, trait or you learn how to do a double jump, whatever, for the game, it's not one of those things where you learn it all in the beginning like Call of Duty. You literally, as you go on, it flashes you back to when you're training. So I really liked that because it made me feel like, oh, hey, look, I'm learning. And that's what they're probably going to do for this one. You like the flashbacks? I like the flashbacks when they use it in the right context. Sometimes they don't use it the right way. And then all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're like, what was the what was the point of that? You know? So so you're definitely going to see Wonder Woman 1984. 100%. Are you going to go see it when it comes out? In the theater. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try and get tickets this weekend to see uh, Last Jedi. Last Jedi. Why are you saying that? Rise of the Skywalker. That's did it open already? Uh, tonight was the grand open. Well, tonight was the premiere in L.A. Uh-huh. Um, and then it opens up Thursday night. That's why the Mandalorian episode seven. If those of you don't know, and Mandalorian episode seven comes out Wednesday night. Um, that way it doesn't. Uh, Does that tie? Now, is this episode of the Mandalorian going to tie into Skywalker? 
So that's the, 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 I don't think so. I think it's more of like a, a <coughs> geez, I hate being sick. Um, I think it's more of um, they don't want to compete. You know what I mean? But there, there is a possibility. There's a hundred percent. They're on the po- same. They're on the same team. Like they want to do well. They so are. But there is. A, there is a possibility because there were rumors that something gets revealed in the Mandalorian. That for the for, this is not really a spoiler, but I'll say spoiler alert because the Emperor's voice is in the new trailers for the Rise of Skywalker. But there is a belief that in the Mandalorian, there's going to be proof or a reasoning behind how he could have survived in the show. So we don't know if it's going to be. There, I'll tell you, there's some that there's. How do you think he survived? So um, there's a couple of pe- people I've heard that maybe it's a Force ghost. So in in okay. in Legends canon, it was I believe only Jedi's were were the ones able to because their souls were pure. But who knows? There's also because he was so tied to the Kaminoans and he believed in cloning. What if that basically the one that was killed was a clone of of the Emperor and it wasn't the actual Emperor? So there's a lot of different ways that could happen. Is that kind of disappointing for fans? It's like, I don't... Do you like shows like where the characters die and then they come back? Like Jon Snow in uh, Game of Thrones. Like, he should have died. He should have not... Like, he didn't really... I don't like... I don't know. Do you like when shows do that? Especially like a main character. You like um, assume like he's dead, it's over, the good guy's won. And like, no. Pull the rug out of you. I, I like the shows that basically, if they do kill someone... Um, I think the big problem is when it's a main character, some shows make it linger too long. So they dwell on that fact for too long. That they're dead? Yeah, so it kind of ruins the show. But when a show does it, like like The Red Wedding, they, it just was a massacre, and it was just like, hey, it is what it is, boy. You know what I mean? It was like, whatever. Yeah. It just happened. And so, uh, <coughs> have you seen the funny memes about uh, Little Baby Yoda? They go, you all. They go, you all know if this show was on HBO, that Baby Yoda would have been dead within the first four episodes. But because it's Disney, you know he's not going to die this season. So <laughs> the one thing I do think is crazy. We'll talk a little bit Mandalorian. Is that um, we haven't seen um, what's I can't remember his name. The guy that he was in Breaking Bad. He was in Revenge. He plays a moth. Um, a he, moth. So a moth. What uh, is that? So Moff is basically like the ranking. So Grand Moff Tarkin, he was one of the head generals of the Empire. So this guy, um, like... Is a human person? Yeah, he's a human person. Uh, Carlos Esposito, I think it's Carlos Esposito. I'm sorry, I have to. um, I have to look it up because I love him as an actor. He was great on... on, um, No, it wasn't Revenge. It was Revolution. He was amazing on Revolution. What's Revolution? Uh, Revolution, it's Giancarlo Esposito. So, um, uh, he was, it's him right there. Okay. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he plays, I'm going to see if it's even on here. Yep. Moff Gideon is who he plays. So they show him in the trailers and he hasn't showed up yet. So it's like, they've only got two episodes left. So he has to show up in the next one. The one after that, I don't know. So is the Mandalorian and the Rise of Skywalker on the same kind of timeline? No, nope. different. So For like hundreds of years, or how? No, 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 no. So Rise of so Rise of Sky uh, Rise of Skywalker is technically forty. Is it forty years after? I think it's forty-ish years after Return of the Jedi. I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah. So this Mandalorian takes place five years after. The battle is over. So this take it takes place five years after the end of Return of the Jedi. Okay. So that's why you see a lot of characters in it that are have ties to Imperial stuff, but they're not Imperials anymore, kind of thing. It's very fresh. You can tell like a lot of stuff is still fresh. But I, um, I think the the Disney because the, they, they they added everything on here um, on Disney Plus. No, uh, they they added a new timeline. On Star Wars because they added the Resistance cartoons, the Clone War cartoons, so <coughs> the order of time is basically uh, Episode One, Two, and then Clone Wars takes between takes place between Two and Three. Then after th- is Three, and then it's uh, Solo, 
And then they're also going to have um, the Obi Wan show is going to take place right about the same time as Solo did. Yeah. So right after Episode Three, then you have um, the cast the Cassian Andor show they're going to they're making takes place at the same time as Star Wars Rebels, which is right before Rogue One and A New Hope because Rogue One is literally right up to New Hope, the first yeah. Star Wars. Then it goes Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and then The Mandalorian. And if you see, if you look right there, it, sh- it shows kind of the gap. It does do like a good job of the timeline. So I think, yeah, I, th- I want to say it's it want because in the show Kylo Ren's about thirty years old in the first one, and I believe they want everything to kind of take place within a couple of years of each other. So there's no gaps in it or anything like that. So I mean, we'll see. I hope it does well, but they have stated that this will be the last trilogy. They're not going to do trilogy films anymore. So they're going to do like kind of like solo. They're going to do standalone films. They said they're going to have continuing characters. Like who? who like who are they going to do next? I mean, CP three PO. No, 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 no. I don't mean like that. I mean they're going to probably they're going to create new characters, but they're not going to do a trilogy story. Oh, okay. So basically, let's say for instance, they they create this character, uh-huh. and they follow him going through whatever on his thing, and then he has a friend. And then maybe she's the focus of the next one, and he just kind of bounces in and out of it, but he's not in it the whole time. It's not going to be a direct link with all the same cast every single uh, movie. Do you think that's going to fare well? Uh, I think so, because I think they're going to go to the every two-year model after that, and they're probably going to alternate around Avatar, because they're they're under the same umbrella now, so you don't want to do damage to your own films. So, I mean, there's going to be a void with Marvel movies not coming out as much as they were. They kind um, of run out of material, right? No. No? They still got more? Marvel? Yeah. <sighs> Marvel's got so much. What else they got? What's a new, like, what character have they not made a movie for? Marvel. Well, all the ones they're bringing in from for Black Widow. Yeah, I don't even know. I didn't hear about that. <coughs> who's, have... in, who's in Black Widow? Uh, Character-wise. Oh, like, what's his name? Like, he's the Soviet, he's a... Uh, Red uh, Skull? No, 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 no. No, he's like the Soviet uh, Captain America. It's it's played by David Harbour. He's hilarious in it. You haven't seen the trailer for it? No. They were making fun of him, saying that he's too fat to fit in his suit anymore because she goes home. Because I believe um, the Black Widow takes place right after Civil War. So she's hiding out because okay. she betrayed Iron Man to let Cap escape. So she's kind of laying low, and she went to go see her sister, who in the trailer beats her up. But David Harbour plays... Uh, Red Guardian is his name, Alexei Sh- uh, Shostakov. So um, he's hilarious in it. It seems he's very comedic. He walks out and his hair is all frizzy out of the the, the the mask. He's like, it still fits. And he walks out and he's got kind of like a little bit of a belly. So uh, it looks fantastic. When is Black Widow coming out? Uh, 2020? 2021? Yep, yep, May 1st, 2020. So what else they got? They got they got Black Widow. Anything else down the pipes for them? Um, probably the next Spider Man because there's another Spider Man coming out. Right. Um, and then they're gonna start building up the uh, um, the new group of Avengers. So you got uh, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange. Um, I can't remember. There's a couple more, but there's a few in the works. But the thing that I've noticed with the Marvel stuff is they'll put like a release date, and then they'll kind of like dial it back a little bit and then they'll go well this one's going to come out this one this one and this one and so um we'll see what happens if they do any more like retro ones because a lot of people liked captain marvel because it was set in the 90s so you know i could see like uh david harbour take on the red guardian in the 80s like when they're bringing down the berlin wall or or something like that you know that'd be cool being over there in europe would be kind of cool to see so we'll see what happens um and the last trailer we'll talk about is for um <clears throat> uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, you know, I really liked it because it, it, it you don't see any of the original Ghostbusters in it at all. No, you just see um, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Finn. I think his name's Finn something. He's the kid. I think Finn Wolfram, something like that. Do you um, want Ekman? Ekman's. Uh, Ekman, what's his name? Uh, the scientist guy. I can't remember anymore. We'll just pull up Ghostbusters. All right, dude. The real Ghostbusters. Oh, look, they have a bunch on here now. Uh, but the reason why I like this trailer. Ekman, I, think. Ekman? I don't even know. 
Vankman. Vankman. That's Vankman. Yeah. Dr. Peter Vankman. No, it's not Peter Vankman. It's, um, so that's Trevor. Vankman isn't the one we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> I gotta see which one it is now because it's, um, it's the one who passed away. What's his name? Uh, Harold Ramis. Yeah, Harold Ramis. It's his character. It's Spangler. So Spangler's character, that's was that's, um, that's who, uh, Finn, Finn Wolfhard. So Finn Wolfhard's character of Trevor, his grandpa was Spangler. So they basically, it, it, they don't really say, it, they don't say if it was like an abusive situation or they lost all their money. He kind of says we travel a lot and all we have left is this old rundown house that my grandpa left us. And when you go in there, you see all these plans, and he ends up finding um, one of the ghost traps. And what I really like about it is, is Paul Rudd's character is kind of like, oh, yeah, this is a cool replica. And all of a sudden, it opens up, and he's like, he goes, there haven't been ghosts out here for a long time. So it, yeah. it had a little nostalgia, but you didn't see any of the original characters, which was it felt great to me because they all say, well, we're in it. But you don't know how they're in it. You don't know how they're in it. Exactly. They could randomly show up in the very end for two seconds. It could be like, um, what movie was it? Uh, where the the guy that played the Green Ranger, Tommy, he was in a like a cameo with the Pink Ranger in one movie, and they were like pointing at something, and it was like two seconds, and it was like that's funny. Oh, they were in the new the newest Power Rangers. They had a little five second thing. They're like, oh, like you know, taking a picture or something. I liked uh, Zombieland. <clears throat> was it Zombieland with the? Uh... Bill Murray. Uh huh. I liked his cameo. Oh, that's right, because he was dead in that one, wasn't he? <laughs> well, he he dies. Yeah. Yeah. He plays a zombie. Yeah. So um, we got that, and you gonna see it? I'm gonna see it. No doubt, huh? No doubt. There's there's only there's a handful of movies, so obviously Rise of the Skywalker I have to go watch. Then you have Wonder Woman. <clears throat> Wonder Woman eighty four. Um, this Ghostbusters Afterlife looks really 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 good, and I just don't see anything. I mean. It's, um, I do want to watch that one with Ryan Reynolds that, uh, reg- is a regular guy or something like that. It sounds right, yeah. The one that he plays a background character in a video game, basically. Yeah. You didn't know that? I didn't know he's what it was like about. A, he's like a background character in Grand Theft Auto. Like he's playing in the, like a character he's in the a video character game? He's a character in the video game, yeah. Oh, okay. And he's just walking around and bad stuff's always happening and he ends up taking it into his own hands and kind of goes rogue. <laughs> Right, so that sounds interesting. And he said it was the funnest movie he's ever made. Really? And you know that's I think it's because he can do whatever he wants. I know Deadpool he wants to make sure it's 100% accurate. It's 100% um good according to what comic book standards are. So I'm sure he had a lot more freedom in this one. So um we'll see. And speaking of him, he has that one that um I wish Andrew was here to brag about. It. He loves it. I'm going to watch it this weekend. Uh Underground 6. Right. He's been just insane about it, and um, there was a lot of funny stuff. Apparently, it opens up with like a six-minute car chase scene. I think it's twenty minutes. Twenty minutes? Yeah, it, I think it's twenty minutes. It was long. I know that. But they, when they were filming it, um, Ryan Reynolds was leaning against the building while they were filming it and talking on his Instagram, and the stunt happens behind him. No way. And it was really cool because you could. I mean, you can. See, it's Michael Bay. I mean, so a lot of explosions, a lot of explosions, cars flipping. Yeah. So you see everything real, like in, in a real cool way. And he shows it and everyone's like, well, that's so cool. So yeah, like you said, it's something crazy long chase scene to start with. Um, so I'll watch that. We'll probably try and review it next week. Um, so let's, before we go into, um, I want you to go over one thing before we do a couple of the quick ones. So why are you not into the Mandalorian? Why am I not into Mandalorian? Uh, so I saw the first, I think, <clears throat> was it four or five episodes? When the uh, woman showed up, when they're defending the wetlands. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, that's five. That four, five. That's five. I started watching it. I don't know. I just kind of was slow. It kind of was dragging a little bit. Uh-huh. There wasn't really, like, progression in the story. Well, then you, you got to... It's like a little, like, side thing. Like, him defending those people. Well, then you know. need to watch... You need to watch six. I, you got to get back into it? You need to watch six. A hundred percent. Like... That was my favorite episode. Six was. Six has been my favorite episode so far. Why is that? Was it because it saw a lot of progression um, in the storyline? Um, it adds the storyline in that you have characters that he's dealt with before. So you see people that are former associates. Um, he goes on a mission, and you can see a lot of like a lot of his just awesomeness as a fighter kind of thing. 
Um, a lot of people have complaints, which I won't mention, but I'll tell you afterwards because you'll get you'll get the complaint. I, that, that'll probably be one of your complaints. Is the complaint everybody else has? What was that? <clears throat> I can't say it'll spoil something. Okay. So, but I'll tell you afterwards. It won't spoil it for you, but it spoils it for people who are watching. Maybe. maybe. Okay. Um, well, that's good. It, 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 I think <clears throat> so. Favreau. I don't know if they sat down with them and were like, "Look, this is going to be a five season show." And it's basically going to get us through until we have a better feeling about what Star Wars is going to be. Or if it's one of those things like, they're like, hey, you're going to start rebuilding the canon from the ground up so we have more stuff to build off of. Because I honestly think like the, the Star Wars universe is only going to get better because of Disney+. Plus. You're going to get a lot of stuff that you want. I mean, you got to think, they had the Obi-Wan show under wraps for four years. For four years it was under wraps. So that just, impressive. that just tells me that it's going to be something super epic. So I think, because they're already filming season two of The Mandalorian. So I know it's going to be one of those When's things. When's Obi dropping? Um, that one's like 2024 or something like what? that. Something crazy, I think. I thought they already had like the first season done. No. no they no, just no, no, started no, no, filming no, no, no. them? I think they're just starting to film, I think. Because I thought there was like I a trailer for it. Right? No, there was no trailer for it. No? No, I know that. Because Darth they, um, Maul's in it. Darth Maul comes out, I think. Nobi. Um, well, no, but he's in Clone Wars a bunch, apparently. I'm about 20 episodes in on Clone Wars Season 1, so I guess he shows up in Clone Wars. Clone Wars, the animated one? Yeah. So, it would make sense if it took place the same time as uh, Solo. Spoiler alert, he's in Solo. Um, but let me look up... Um, Star Wars. Because I don't even know what it's going to be titled. We don't. I'll just Probably look up, Obi-Wan. I'll look up, I'll look up Ewan McGregor. Obi-Wan well, <clears throat> Kenobi. Or Kenobi, maybe. Yeah, that would be a good one to be Kenobi. called. We'll see what it's. We'll see what it is. Because usually what it lists it as is future upcoming projects. I don't know. See, it says untitled Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Um, Titus just trademarked Kenobi. It says in production. <laughs> um... No date, no nothing. <clears throat> I thought I could have sworn I saw a like, trailer for it. They have a fan made one. Uh, that's what it is. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'm excited. We'll see what happens this week. Um, but we'll see. So now we know why Titus doesn't like Mandalorian, which is understandable. It's kind of like I always my my go to example is uh, Homeland. How it was amazing the first six episodes, but you can tell exactly when it got renewed for a second season. Because the plot completely changed, and it didn't make sense. It doesn't seem like it's tight. I don't know. Like It feels like that one episode I saw was like a filler episode. I think they're going to the... Because apparently... They're, 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 it's a tribute to the Western, basically, is what it is. So, I mean, we're going to yeah. see what happens. Guess, so, yeah. you, uh, I'll tell you why, you why you'll like the next one and why you're going to hate the next one. But uh, And then we have a couple announcements about shows so or movies. So, Flash is going to be scheduled for July 1st, 2022. Which is a long way. Um, and I think it's because he'll be filming Ezra Miller. I think it's Ezra Miller. Is that his name? He's going to be filming uh, Fantastic, the next Fantastic Beast movie. So that'll put a little delay on he plays the, Flash. the Flash. He plays The Flash. He's in the Fantastic Beast movies. Um, and then you have Mad Max Fury Road 2 is confirmed. Um, Half Baked 2 is rumored <laughs> to be, be in production. In is I, bet be da- I bet you Dave Chappelle will be in it. I think you would, dude. Now that Weed's Legal, man, come to California film that'd be fantastic. <laughs> um, and then they also released the Im- first images of the Xbox Series X, and everyone's been making fun of it because they go, "That thing looks goofy," but whatever. What um, what movie or what? <clears throat> they're gonna have Halo, right? Too is they're gonna release Halo with that one? Probably. It's usually, what they have when they they drop the first one, mm. but they're um. But I think these ones are going to be cross-platform. And that's why Sony is delaying there so long is to make sure it's cross-platform. Because they just announced MLB The Show no longer going to be exclusive to the PlayStation, I think, in 2021 or 2022. So there's a lot of things that are going to be transferring over. Wouldn't that be better for the systems? Because they don't have to to pay to get that exclusive right to the show? Like Uh, Sony? Don't they have to pay money to get that contract? Yeah, but when you pay... When you pay, so let's say for instance it's like a ten year thing and it's twenty million dollars. That's probably more than that. No, I know, but so let's say it's ten. Let's say it's a ten year deal. However much they paid, mm-hmm. I guarantee people who are that's all they're about. They're gonna make more money because people will buy that system just to play that game. 
now it's not about that anymore. It's about selling the actual game because I believe Sony makes that game. So I think that's the thing is Sony's going to start making games for other companies. So we'll see how well it works and how well it works together because that's the other problem you run into is you know how to make a game for Sony. Do you know how to game make work for Xbox? That's a good point. And will it? How well good will it m- migrate? I know that Nintendo and Xbox have already been working on it because I believe you can get on your Nintendo Switch, you can get your Xbox Live account, so it has a lot of stuff that are integrated. So we'll see. Um, and then the saddest news from the movies: Redesign Studio closed. Now, if you don't know who Redesign Studio is, they're the ones that made Sonic the Hedgehog look normal like he should. They made him twice. Well, yeah, they made them twice, and they shut their doors because they uh, they're broke and they're filing bankruptcy. Was it the reason they filed bankruptcy because they reached did Sonic? No, or? I think what I think it? I think it has more to do with they probably didn't have as much work. I mean, when you get that much backlash off the first design, and then it's kind of like you want us to do the second design. You know, we redo the design. People again. really did not like it that much. It wasn't like a couple million that complained about it. Yeah, it was a lot. <sighs> That's the problem, though, is so everyone gets excited. Oh, they're making a game, a movie based on a video game. You know what they never do? They never have an animated one mixed in with everything else. Even though that that one horrible movie, Pixels, the Adam Sandler one, every single video game character looks just like they do in the video game. So that's yeah. kind of, you know what I mean? You didn't. I kind of like Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> that movie was it from the 1990s? Oh, yeah, with John Leguizamo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was legit. I love that one. People trashed it. Because it doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. It There's makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> That's it. Turn them into the Koopa Troopas. It's because they're all people. King Koopa was a was a a dude. So, you know, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. But I think it was pretty funny. It's yeah, for a kid I liked it. Yeah, it was fun as a kid. Yeah. John Leguizamo was always the he's the hygiene guy. Yeah. Um so then we uh before we go into Titus's little talk about stuff We'll cover uh, Power Rangers reboot. So they've been talking about rebooting it again. They already said the original people are gone from the last reboot, which I actually liked. I liked the last reboot. I was okay with it. I didn't see it. Um, But it's going to be set in the 90s. And that got me super excited. Now, did you see the newer Power Ranger? Who's the bad guy? I don't remember who the bad guy was. Is it that chick and then that wolf guy, right? Oh, yeah. It was uh, Rita Repulsa. Yeah, it was, and it was it was played by um, what's her face from Hunger Games and everything. Um, I liked it. I liked it like quite a bit. Um, I get why people didn't like it, but I like the the concept of how she came out and and Rita Repulsa basically gets built back up by gold and like it gives her like a gimmick. That's what she's really after. Because you never knew what she was after. No. In the, the 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 kid show, I'm like, what is she even doing? Why is she bringing these monsters about? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't even know why she wants these monsters around. Okay, whatever. So I really liked it, and I was like, okay, you know, that's my favorite show. Like in second grade. Yeah, that was my show. I'm trying to think what my favorite show in second grade was. It's probably like Gargoyles. That was a good one too. The I animated loved, series. Oh yeah, I loved Gargoyles. That and the Batman one was pretty good. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. And then a lot of Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. It's a dark show. Yes, it is. We talked about that last time. And I don't even remember. There was, um, like, Doug. I don't remember Doug, the Nickelodeon version. And then Rocco's Modern Life was horrible when you look back on it. What about Ren Stimpy? Ren and Stimpy, yeah. And then I can't even think of Like, I watch a lot of Disney-esque stuff. So, like, my grandma would record the old Goofy how-to videos. Remember those? Yeah. Goofy would teach you how to dance, or Goofy would go uh, do weightlifting and whatnot, and it told you what position to make, and you'd always get hurt. Right, right. So it was a lot of that. And then uh, my favorite cartoon as a kid was Ferdinand the Bull. Okay. But he didn't want to fight. All he wanted to do was smell flowers. Didn't matter how much you hit him or pushed him, he just wanted to smell flowers. And so I remember that one a lot. I didn't watch the new one because I didn't want to ruin the nostalgia for me. So <laughs> I'm just preparing myself when my kid gets older and he can talk and he wants to watch stuff that I, I knew from a kid and it gets ruined for me. So, um, But we'll finish off with Titus talking about – so Titus has actually watched all of the Watchmen season except for the finale. Right. He won't spoil anything too much. So if you're actually not caught up to the second to last episode, don't uh, – um, just plug your ears so we do our sign off. But uh, you, you've watched the movie too, correct? Yeah, Parts it's been the, a while. Okay, but whatever. 
But um, I wanted to cover this because all the rumors have been it was the best finale ever. Do not make a second season. It ended quite well. From what I heard, it seems like a good ending. I don't want to spoil it, but it, it seems like a good ending. It seems uh-huh. like a fitting ending to the right. show. Because the show kind of is dark and twisted and takes mm-hmm. some crazy turns. So... We'll see. I like. I hope there's a second season. I haven't seen the last episode, but I do like the show. So, and the the episodes have been kind of consistent on how you feel about them. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think they've all been pretty good. So you're not getting that Walking Dead feeling yet. No, not yet. No, no, no. It's been it's been pretty good. I liked it. I thought it did a good job with tying into the movie or the comic books and everything. I liked it a lot. I saw a photo of them all, like the whole team lined up. And how it, the comic book, the movie, and the show are all identical. So you know the people doing it know what they're doing. Um, I I never got into it. I always wanted to watch it. I never did, though. So I might have to watch it the now. Movie? The show it's or the anything. Show. I never watch any of it. I want to kind of buy the books now. I heard they that from what I've read, the show sticks the closest to the comics and to the books. Right. That's right. There's like, it's ridiculously accurate. And what, the only thing that I'm dreading is, let's say I get into it, you know there won't be a second season until at least another year and a half. You know. If they have one. If they have one, yeah. Yeah, it does, I've read that. So the comic, the the novel ends, and then this is, the series takes off where the novel ends. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. So it's kind of, it's a good tie-in. Right. Which they started doing with Star Wars. Um, I read uh, the one of the books before, uh... Uh, the Force Awakens. They actually told the story of uh, Poe, uh, Finn, and um, Ray. Like you told the stories of them growing up, okay. so you kind of learn more about them. And I do like those because it gives you context. You get more. I feel like in a book when you read it, you get more in depth. You can learn so much more in a shorter period of time. So then when you watch the show. You get more, even more involved because you know their backstory. You're not having to sit there and wonder what was going on. And when they do have flashbacks, you're like, oh, that's awesome. It's exactly how I thought it would be or whatever. You know, that's why my mom doesn't like, she doesn't like watching the Harry Potter movies. Because she's like, they don't live up to expectation. Oh, the books? Yeah. She's read all the books and she goes, the first one was pretty close. But she realized the content got so in-depth and depth and depth and depth. And they cut so much out and they merged so much things. Well, these are like, what? 800 page books something yeah like same with Game of Thrones though Game of Thrones they say they they cut a lot of things they change a lot of stuff which we've spoke about before yeah. with, especially with the Red Wedding they changed a lot of stuff dramatically <clears throat> which yeah, I some th- of the character arcs weren't the which same which I think if they would have kept it the same way I would have liked it more with Lady Stoneheart with Lady Stoneheart and also with uh, uh, Rob Stark's wife still being alive that's right she didn't die in the one how'd she escape in the book do you know she didn't go to the wedding because she was pregnant. She, she didn't go to the feast because she was pregnant. Yeah. She didn't go to the feast because she was pregnant. Oh, it was the wedding. She didn't go to the wedding. She was pregnant. And the dog, I believe Rob's dog doesn't get killed in that part of the book. Because I believe the dog is with her. He doesn't bring the dog with him. Something like that. Or I think in the book, the dog may get it. But the dog is a lot smarter in the book. And that's what I've heard of the big complaint about Game of Thrones was... The dogs are much more intelligent. There's a lot more that, that you learn from the dogs in the book because they all can warg. All the children can warg. Unlike in this one, it's only... Oh, really? Yeah, I believe um, Arya can warg, and I believe if Sansa... I don't know if she tries to, but in the book, it establishes they can warg into their wolves. So I brought the wife in to try and watch Game of Thrones to watch the last season, and, and guess what episode she walked in on when Ned has to kill Sansa's dog? She's like, no. Nope, she started bawling. Why would you have me walk in on this part? I go, I, think, I forgot about it. I think the series and the books, you got to look them at separate. You completely. Yeah. I think HBO has that track record. Well, not now with Watchmen, I guess, but that's a separate story. Well, Watchmen's like it's taking it into a different... There's no book about this. It kind of takes off where Rorschach like, publishes this plan and everything. It exposes it and takes off with the Seven Calvary is inspired by Rorschach. Now is now are they intending to make more books or that's it? I think that's it. Because it would be weird for them to have. So you let ended it on a cliffhanger in the books. You don't what well, ends, but you don't know how it could end. Does that make sense? So basically, they're leaving it open to interpretation to however you feel you want it to end. The books, I think I haven't read them, but I want to. But there's like one where like Doctor Manhattan leaves, he goes to Mars. Um, the Alan skill or. Uh, 
what's her name? Silk Spectre. They become a couple. Uh, spoiler alert, Rorschach is dead. But before he dies, he mails his stuff to the journalist, and he's like, it's up to you to either <coughs> expose this plan that, uh, what's his name, mate? I forget his name. To unite humanity. Okay. And that plan ends up killing, like, millions of people, but it does the greater good of bringing the world together instead of it going into a nuclear holocaust with uh, Russia and the United States. Well, that's deep. That's real deep. <laughs> so uh, make sure you watch Watchmen Season 1 because we kind of want a second season. We kind of don't. We don't know yet. So, um, well, that's good to know. Uh, once you watch the finale, we'll, do, we'll talk about it just to see how you feel about it. Because I know um, a lot of shows, you have to be kind of negative with them because you know that one little comment from someone higher up can say, oh, this is going to change everything in the show. It's kind of like they had that show Scandal that the rumor was with everybody, the only reason why that show was still on was because so many famous people liked it. They like always tweeted about it and talked about it. The, the ratings were not great, but they always stuck to their plot line. It always stuck to that same, you know what I mean? It always did the same thing. A lot of times, all of a sudden, a character changes. I don't know if you saw that thing about American Gods we talked about earlier. Um, Orlando Jones is like putting them on blast because this character is not in this current season He's not gonna be in season three. What god is he? Um, he's not. He's killed by Mister Something. Well, they're all like kind of like inspired, like gods or deities. Right. I can't remember. World. He's Mister Ashby or something like that. Oh, okay. It's all, dude. It's all over the place because I, I, I. Um, There's a lot of gods out there. I couldn't. I couldn't get into it at first because all I could see about with the main character is he's on a show that I like. Um, he was on the 100, so I always just saw him as that character. Okay. Um. So, oh wow, this is hilarious, this is crazy. He, um, he is just freaking out, it's all over. So he's basically, he's, uh, talking about something, oh, it says it got disconnected, but it's still recording. Um, he's talking about, uh, he was blindsided, he didn't know, but apparently, um, he says he got screwed over, but apparently when you read the stuff, they're like, it's based on books. And they go, his character isn't in the third book. So they're like, we don't, we, we just didn't have anything for him. He's not fired. He's just not in this current season. <clears throat> so he's just like, whining. He's being a whiny actor then? Like, he's pulling the race card now. Is he, that's what he's saying? He's pulling the race card. But they have other black characters in the, I haven't seen the show. I need to. I want to. Um, it just shows on the main screen, it shows two others. So, so you stopped watching it? I watched like the first two or three episodes. Well, I didn't know Crispin Glover's in it. That's pretty cool. Um, so Orlando Jones played like Mr. Vo- Nancy. It's like a voodoo kind of thing? No, he wears a suit. He looks like a nice, dry guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The only one that threw me for a loop was um, the one guy who plays like the Irish. He has an Irish accent. He's fighting in a bar. Oh, yeah. I'm like, this is super confusing. I don't know what he's saying. So... I didn't have time to really just go through all of it, so I, you know, I want to sit down and watch it all. And now that it's two seasons, yeah, we'll see what happens. So, um, anything else that you're looking forward to watching? I'll probably go watch Watchmen tonight after this. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know how you like it. I will. That's about it. Um, yeah, I just finished up season two of Mindhunter. I yeah. Enjoyed that. I was entertaining. Season three, not going to come till like 2021 or something like that. Oh, Maybe. Really? Yeah, they, there's a delay because uh, the director's working on something else. Mm. So. <clears throat> That's about it. Uh, as far as movies. I will I say Karen uh, Gillian, the one that plays Nebula on Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. She said Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is the best of all three of them. So they just wrapped filming, and she said it's amazing. So optimistic about that. Uh, I believe they will go to uh, a new uh, Guardians of the Galaxy team. So that could be kind of cool. Is they going to get rid of Star-Lord and all that? Uh, Gamora, at least. And probably Bautista, because he's on the outs with Disney. So <laughs> What's he doing? He's saying Disney's terrible? He said he wouldn't be in the movie if they didn't bring uh, James Gunn back. No. Oh. So he says a lot of very mean things, I think. He's a good actor. I watched that. I started watching that Gruber when I was uh, at the in laws. It was on TV and it was pretty funny. I started watching it. Gruber? Gruber. What's that? 
he's um it's a uh, Kumail Nanjiani he plays like a Uber driver. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and he's a detective, and he's driving him around. He ends yeah, up commandeering yeah, yeah. him and making making him drive him places because he got eye eye work done, so he can't see well. Yeah, is it good? The first part of it was hilarious because he has that. He's he's a good actor, surprisingly, for being as big and yoked he is. He's not. He doesn't remind me of The Rock. Like he he's more fluid. You think? Like he looks moves like um better. He plays a good meathead. And then when I watched him, I can't remember, I watched him in something else, and he just, like, he had a real compassionate vibe about him. Like, he didn't feel like a meathead. He, he felt like just, like, you could you could see past those huge muscles, and, like, he was just a dude kind of thing. So, um, but he's a super meathead in Gruber. Have you seen uh, Silicon Valley? No. no. I watched the first couple of episodes. You didn't like it? Kumail Nanjani's in that as well. I just didn't have time to keep up. I, I got rid of... I got it was on HBO, right? Right. I got rid of HBO when like the the first season ended, so I didn't catch keep up with it, and I just got it again uh, earlier this year. This is his final season right now. Yes, yes. So I remember the big thing was um, what's his face left the show early on. Um, curly haired dude. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he left. T.J. The sh- Miller. T.J. Miller left the show early on, and they're like, "Why'd you do that?" And he's like, "It was time for me to move on." You know, now I don't hear him from any anymore. It's totally off the show. Yeah. All like quiet. Season two? Yeah, season two is his last season. I think halfway through, I think. Yeah. It goes to Thailand or Tibet. Something like that. Spoiler alert. No, yeah, season two. <laughs> well, uh, for the FOMO cast, uh, thank you for everyone listening, watching. I hope the audio is better for you. Titus can tell his friends. I'll friends. play it back afterwards with the headphones unplugged to see. Um, <laughs> I honestly think that it should be better. Um, but uh, we'll see how it goes. If not, um, I apologize now at the end rather than doing all that. Uh, but uh, make sure to go to all of our social media platforms, facebook.com slash FOMOcast, Twitter FOMO underscore cast. Go to FOMO podcast on Instagram, go to our YouTube, youtube.com slash FOMO cast and go to what else we had? Oh, Twitch. Search FOMO cast on Twitch. I don't, I don't know what Twitch time. is. It's the, where, where the good people game on and stuff oh. like that. People actually will put green screens behind them. They record themselves and they put them over the game. So they're kind of like barely, you can see them react and whatnot, but they're like embedded in the game. And people watch this mm-hmm. into the millions. It's basically kind of like when we used to grow up as kids watching their friends take turns with patrons playing video games. Same kind of thing. They just watch people play. It's pretty popular. Right. So uh, for the FOMO cast, I'm Chris. Titus. And we'll see you next time.